For many years on my channel, you've seen me use this power supply unit. It has an adjustable voltage output between 0 and 30 and a maximum current output of 5 amps. Today we'll be taking a close look at this extremely useful power supply that's available for 120 volt or 240 volt mains power. This PSU has an adjustable regulated output between 0 and 30 volts and a maximum constant current output of 20 amps. Power supplies like this one are perfect for testing higher powered electrical parts, motors, as well as high current, low voltage lighting. With this unit you also have the ability to charge all types of 6 volt, 12 volt, or 24 volt batteries. To get started let's take a closer look at this power supply unit. Included with the power supply unit you get the instruction manual, power cord, in this case North American, plugs into the back of the unit which you'll see in a minute. The cables you see right here, one side has alligator clips, the other side has banana jack, and this is intended for up to 5 amps. So you're only going to use this cable on the front of the unit. You have your negative, your ground, and your positive. Between 5 and 20 amps, you're going to be using the connections on the rear. And you can see that right over here. Positive, all right, and over here is your negative cooling fan and over here is where you plug the cable into. Here's a look at the side of the unit. Ventilation openings, housing is metal, back here is metal, and the front is, I believe, plastic. And here's a look at the cable that's included for the higher current use. Number 12, stranded copper wire. These connections here, the ring connectors, I added to this end it's just a bare end that you get. On this side, they did a very nice job crimping and soldering the ring connectors on. Okay, let me power it up, push the button. Constant voltage setting with this knob. And you just turn this very slowly to set the desired output. So I want to go 12.5. Now keep in mind with this unit, if you're looking for extreme precision with this voltage output, you're not going to get it. It might fluctuate between 12.49, 12.51, so I just wanted to let you know that ahead of time. Let's go up to 14.7, as if you wanted to charge a lithium iron phosphate battery at 12 volt. So right there, 14.7. 14.71. Let's see how high it goes. Should go up to 30 or 31. Let's see. 30. 31.03. That should go all the way down to zero. The one thing I would have liked to have seen with this unit is the display just a little bit brighter. You can still see it clearly when you look straight at it, but if you're looking from an angle, it is a little difficult to see, especially if you're in a bright room. All right, so now we're at zero. Let me connect up the banana plug, and I want to compare the voltage reading to the reading on my digital multimeter. With the Must Tool digital multimeter connected up to the unit, this is at zero volts. You can see we're at 0 0.081. So it's showing a little above zero volts. Let's go through all different ranges to see how the accuracy is. And if I see a discrepancy that looks pretty big, I'll switch to a different multimeter to make sure it's not the multimeter that's making this look like it's off. So now let's go to 6 volts. Let's go to 3 volts. All right, so 3.01, 02, 01, so this is off by like 0.02. 0 0.025, all right, let's go up to 6 volts now, all right, that's pretty good, 601, 603, so 0 0.02, let's put this up to 12 volts, all right, so 12, 1201, not bad, slightly off, nothing major, Let's go 14.7, like you're charging a lithium iron phosphate battery. 
0.72, looking good. Let's take this up to 24 volts. So 24.01, 24, pretty good. Now let's go to the maximum. 31.03, 31.06. Using a different digital multimeter, we have 0 0.076 or 76 millivolt. And that's when this is off. And when you go all the way up like the other one, the same thing happens. The voltage on this reads a little bit higher. So there is a little bit of a discrepancy, but if you're not looking for a unit that's extreme accuracy, there's not going to be any issue with this one. Now for the next test, I want to see how well this is going to regulate the output voltage under load. We're going to be performing a 10 amp test and a longer 20 amp test. You can see right here the electronic load is connected up to the unit and we're showing right around 70 millivolt. It does fluctuate between 0.07 and 0.08, so that confirms what we saw earlier with the digital multimeters. Just to let you know, the display is much brighter than you're seeing on camera right now. The problem was the white balance. I had to cover it with this mouse pad and it made it much easier for that display to be seen. All right, so let's put this to 12 volts and we'll do a test at 12. Let's do a 14.7. All right, so 14.7, not bad, 14.73. Let's turn this on, 10 amp current. All right, 998, perfect. Holding the voltage at 10 amps, 147.2. The reason why this is showing slightly lower is not because of anything wrong with this unit. There's a voltage drop, a small one, across the wires, making this voltage lower, which is affecting the wattage value that you see. Okay, not a problem at all. It was able to maintain the voltage output. If anything, it pushed it up from 0.71 to 0.73 to 0.74 range, so not an issue. Now let me repeat the test using a 20 amp load. I'm going to let this run for one hour. Okay guys, after one hour, it was able to maintain the voltage level or just slightly above the level that was set. I had just under 20 amps. It was averaging around 19.88. The temperature of this unit only got very warm to the touch and the airflow coming out of the rear of this unit was very strong. When the fan turns on, it adds 140 milliamps to this display reading. So it definitely has the ability to put out 20 amps. Now what I'd like to do is go a little higher in voltage and put the 20 amp load on it just to make sure it doesn't drop. Do it momentarily, maybe for a couple of minutes. I could only go 400 watts, so that means 200 watts per channel. So if I set this for 20, let's do 21.5. All right, so 21.5. Let's do 10 amps on each. Here we go. Let's make sure that holds. On, on. No problem. 21.5, holding just fine. Ignore the beep, it's just telling me there's a fault here somewhere in my settings, but you can be assured that it's definitely drawing 20 amps, 10 amps on each leg, channel two, channel one, and you can see it right over here. So there's not any issue there. So let's turn those both off. Okay, now the next thing I'd like to do is take a look at the ripple for this power supply. I'm going to have a 20 amp load applied to the power supply. Between the two output posts, I have a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor in parallel with a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. To probe everything, I'm going to have it set up like you see here to minimize interference. You can see that this is wrapped around that sleeve on the probe. The negative is going to go at the bottom and the positive at the top. The oscilloscope screen is going to show you under load, millivolts, peak to peak. Let's turn it on. 
Okay, and let me probe. And here you can see the millivolt peak to peak reading, averaging around 40 millivolts. Just to demonstrate that the constant current adjustment knob does work, there's a halogen lamp inside that shell. Let me put it to 10 volts. Okay, now I'm gonna adjust the current right over here. Keep an eye on that. And you can see the constant current LED is on. So now I can only allow one and a half amps, increase it, two amps, uh, 4.15, and then when you go above what's being drawn by the load, it'll go to constant voltage. And that's it. Let me open up this cover so you can take a look at the inside. You can see the banana jack on the front. That's the ground. Goes to the corner of this board. There's another ground connection on the opposite side, which I'll show you in a minute. There's a fuse over here at the AC input. Very large transformer. Everything here looks pretty good. You can see the heavier wires. Number 12, possibly a number 10 wire. Stranded copper going to the connections at the back of the unit. And you can see there's a large poly switch and that's supplying power to the negative and positive at the front panel. So in the event excessive current is drawn by the front panel, the poly switch is going to limit the current. Large cooling fan and very large heat sink bonded to the components. And we'll look at the opposite side. Everything looks pretty good. Right here you can see where the AC mains is connected, there's a ground, and it goes to this corner of the board. So the ground feeds all the way through to the banana jack at the front. And that's it, a pretty decent power supply. If you're looking for one that goes up to 20 amps, that has the ability to actually do it, and give you a voltage range between 0 and 30, this unit here may be for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.